Oshio, you remember that book, In His Death? That's a, a great book. It really is. And I, and I discovered a book uh, by accident. Um, uh, it's called, uh, let me think, uh, Pilgrim's Regress. Uh, by C.S. Lewis. I was looking for uh, Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, and and I got I got it mixed up. But anyway, I, I was uh, but I thought, well, you know, it, it, this is pretty cool. It's kind of like uh, Pilgrim's Regress. It's kind of like uh, John Bunyan's book, uh, Pilgrim's Progress. And it's really neat. And if you ever get a chance, read it. It's pretty cool. It, it, it's just filled with all these allegories. And 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 if you really pay attention to the the, the message there, it's really cool. But uh, anyway, you know, uh, you think about though uh, about that one book, the uh, In His Steps. Which were there for a while, some time back ago. Uh, people in the churches were uh, going around with bracelets and everything with WWJD. What would Jesus do? Well, the thing is, what Jesus wouldn't do, and that should be more of the question. Uh, what would Jesus do is a good one, and it should always be that. Period. But. I think the main question is to uh, to get a good answer for a good question is a, another question, so to speak. <laughs> to answer a question with a question. <laughs> okay, and that would be what would Jesus, or should I say what Jesus wouldn't do, or what would Jesus not do. <laughs> so, excuse me. Um, I think a lot of times we try to avoid certain things, certain questions, because of the inevitable. I can't even get the word out. It's hard to pronounce the word, especially without my uh, upper plate, you know. Uh, but. It's inevitable. Uh, that is, for a person to. Maybe I'm not getting the right words. <laughs> okay, it, it's unavoidable that uh, uh, I guess would be the, the, a good word. Uh, how that people end up avoiding. Uh, facing certain facts because that means you have to think and to think and to face uh, certain truths about oneself. And there's things that we do, and now some people do this deliberately and some people do it unconsciously, but they avoid the uh, certain questions to to face some certain facts in their own lives about themselves, it's it frightens them. It frightens oneself, especially if if it means that you you know uh, you might have to give up something. You know, like there are certain characters uh, in the book in his steps that where they didn't want to face the facts. Uh, they did not want to let loose of things that they hold so dear. And usually in, in the dirt, these characters uh, in their uh, place, should I say, uh, in their lives, it was uh, things, money, and stuff like that that they didn't want to have to give up to suffer. Suffering. 
Now that is a key word, suffer. There's many ways to suffer for Jesus. I guess you'd say. In other words, uh, one can suffer physically. Uh, like the apostles and all the disciples they did back in the, the, the early church, the days of the apostles. The persecution where they their lives were laid down on the line. It is a hard thing for a person to uh, face that kind of opposition when they have never had nothing but good things, so to speak, in their life. And the same things for a, even uh, where you, you might suffer from ridicule. Uh, what others will think of you, you know, people that are in the church or, or people that doesn't go to church, your, your best friends, your neighbors, whoever. We need to stop and think about why are you in the church or why are we in the church? Why, you know, look, Christian, uh, the key word in Christian is Christ. Or Messiah, meaning Jesus, Yeshua. Oh yeah. Now, to be a Christian means to be a follower of Christ, and that means in, in the Bible, especially there in the New Testament, it talks about uh, following in His steps to live as Jesus lived. Oh yeah hard facts to face when it comes down to it because people go to church and you know but there are uh, a lot of them their idea of going to church is just to hobnob with others and it's the chic thing uh, you know do have your business saying it's a form of entertainment and then there's others who go because they're hungry for the word they're hungry for God. But the thing is, the, the church now, it's become so, I don't know, uh, obscure. Uh, people don't even want to, uh, to live their lives where they have to give up something. You know, and they cannot honestly, truthfully ask the question what would Jesus do or what would Jesus not do they cannot truthfully with themselves be totally absolutely honest about it with themselves now I know there are those who, who would but as a, as a majority, I, I'm just you know speaking here. All right, you, you understand where I'm going with this. But the thing is, but you got to think about what would Jesus not do. Good question. Also, the thing is, are you ready to suffer for Him, or, or what are you, what is it that you won't give up? Think about it. I mean, it can be anything. Uh, is it sports with you? Or what kind of sports is it? Uh, TV programs? Uh, your music that you're listening to? Or the type of, you know, just say type of music or, or whatever. Uh, I mean, is it uh, following, is your problem uh, following people? Uh, idolizing people? Uh, I mean, what is the, the thing? I don't know. It, it varies from person to person. But one thing it generally has to deal with, it has something to do with selfishness and or, and, or greed. It's kind of like a package thing. And people think that it's stupid for a person to uh, willingly... Uh, as a Christian to give up 
of these things that is hindering them from their walk with the God. And, you know, they don't want to be the Christians, uh, you know, that the Bible says that we should be. And they make and, and they make excuses. Well, that was back then. That don't apply now, you know, because we're in modern. No, it's still the same because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, as the Bible says. You think that, you know, God winks at things. And says, well, it is the 21st century, and, you know, I'll wink at that. It's okay. No. What was wrong then is wrong now. What was right then is right now. Okay? You know, like wrong and right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I mention all this is to kind of get our, our minds to thinking. What are we doing? You know, uh, maybe the things you don't want to give up is uh, the way that you dress, or it's a fad, or... or, or uh, I don't know. I mean, it just varies. Maybe certain things that you're reading. I don't know. I'm just trying to give you things. Because, see, it varies from person to person. But, but what you do is how you can uh, pinpoint things is open your Bible and read it. And also remember what things that you don't see the Bible says is wrong. Understand God convicts us. See, the law is written in our hearts, not on stone. See, people talk about uh, the law and the Bible, and they know nothing about the law. And now I'm talking about as Christians, they know nothing about the law. But we need to follow the law that is written in our heart that God has put there. And how did he write it? Through the Holy Spirit. He wrote it in our hearts. And we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. But the thing is, the question is that we're afraid to really face is, am I willing to give up these blank fill in the spot there for Jesus? A am I willing? Will I? For Jesus? You know, think about, am I willing to suffer? to be persecuted. It can be considered the oddball for Jesus. See, a lot of us don't stop to think about these things, what's going on in our lives, and we try to excuse it with certain things. Are you doing that? Think about it. Ask yourself those questions and start thinking and be try to the best that you can. Be honest with yourself. Okay, I just mentioned all those things to, to for you and for me, something to think about, about our lives and our walk with Jesus. We claim to be Christians, but are we? Think about it. Are we? All right, that's just something to, to like a, a little line or a little rule thing there, you know, you hold up and, and a little mirror along with it to kind of give you a little line of things to think about, you know. So, um, God bless you. <laughs> and shalom. And ha-ho.